Hey y'all, what's good? So, back with another edition of Diary of a Black Scientist. So, uh, the other day, I was uh, talking with some friends uh, in the department, and we was actually talking about financial stuff, and uh, not really uh, about grants, about our personal finances. And uh, they were talking about, oh man, I don't have money to do this, I'm, I'm broke, I'm this, I'm that, and I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm living comfortably. So I don't, I don't know what they talking about. So, um, you know, we, we get into like uh, what they're doing with their money. Um, why are they feeling like they're broke? Uh, what are they, you know, what are their finances like? Because we all get paid the same. So I and there's a couple factors like, you know, some people might uh, have just started out in grad school and, you know, they, they got to save up money or, you know, you get into uh, or some some people are uh, better off financially because, you know, they got family that helps them out or they worked before going into grad school. Now, um, for me, uh, I am in a better financial place because I was smart with my money and I feel like uh, people who go straight into grad school and don't know how to uh, don't know how to exactly be great with their finances are stuck in this place where once they get out of grad school they're dead broke and it should not be like that so I'm gonna go into a couple uh, I'm, I'm gonna go into uh, a couple of things as a grad student, because I've been a grad student for about four years now, I guess, a uh, master's degree and now PhD, um, of what kind of things should you do uh, with your finances to make sure that you're in a better financial position uh, once you're in, when you're in grad school and once you're out of grad school. So, uh, so a little background for me, uh, if you didn't know, uh, I um, I was in a position where uh, going into grad school, I was dead broke. Now I was chasing chasing my dream. I was dead broke. If you want to know about all that, uh, you can go watch my Confessions of a Black Scientist. Little plug. Anyway, uh, I was broke, but uh, the reason why I was broke because I I haven't started getting paid by the grad school yet. So you know I. I if you're a master's student, and I know some uh, a lot of master's um, programs don't pay as well. I know uh, the one I was at at Georgia State University didn't pay me nothing. So I had like two jobs, like a night job and a weekend job doing security. So, uh, and I was, wasn't, was you know, getting paid. I mean, I was, I was living by myself, but... I was able to do that because I had a, a crap apartment and I wasn't getting paid much and it was just, I was living paycheck to paycheck and it was terrible. But once I got into uh, the PhD program, I was getting paid a little bit more. Like, so uh, most PhD programs either pay around $20,000, to $30,000 range um, if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a fellowship. So... Uh, most people with assistance shifts, you know, you got a TA or do whatever you got to do, uh, what the program says. Um, and then it depends on the cost of living of the area. So, uh, I've lived in the South and, and, uh, well, I'm from the Midwest and I live on the East coast now. Uh, the West coast is probably way more expensive. Uh, the Midwest is cost of living is low. Uh, the East coast is decently high, probably second highest in the, uh, uh, the South is pretty low, but if you're living in, like, say, I lived in an Atlanta area, it was pretty expensive. Uh, it's, it's closer and closer you went to the, uh, you went to the, well, the closer and closer you came to the city. So, um, with that, uh, the, this might end up being, I don't know, maybe a two or three part series, depending on how long I talk. Um, not trying to ramble on for too long. So, uh, what I did with my money uh, once I was able to actually uh, accumulate some money. So, the first thing you need to know, save. You need to start saving your money. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, they money bone burns a hole in your pocket. But if you're not saving your money, then... Uh, there, there's no way that you, you, you don't have a rainy day fund if stuff goes down and you need to uh, shell out this amount of cash for something, you, you don't have it. And now you're in a rock and a hard place. So, uh, 
the first thing I did when I got like a lump sum of money, because I, I know uh, depending on the program, you either get it once a month or uh, every two weeks. Uh, you you need to put a little bit aside. You need to put a little bit of that money aside. But I know what you're thinking. Hey, dude, like I got to pay rent, utilities, and whatnot. But that means if your if your if your rent is more than your paycheck, that you're not uh, is more than one month's or one uh, or one uh, paycheck. It's you're you're not living below your means. You're living above your means. You're trying to live fancy. You're trying to live uh, by yourself. And like when you're in grad school, man, you got to make sacrifices. And these are one of them, man. You got to live with people. Like I live with like five other people right now, and I pay like seven hundred dollars a month for my room. And <laughs> reason being is because I was willing to make the sacrifice to uh, save my money and pay less, but be a little bit more inconvenienced because I, I live with people. And I mean, it, it's not a bad thing, but you know, I mean, one, you get some crazy stories or experiences or whatnot. I got a whole bunch myself, but uh, two, you get to, you know, Keep a little bit of money, you know, then some of that money stays in your pocket because you're splitting utilities with other people. So utilities isn't going to be that much more money. So uh, I know for monthly we get, uh, I get, well, not month, uh, well, every two weeks we get around a little over $900. And uh, I can pay my rent and all of my utilities with one paycheck. And then the rest of the paycheck goes to me. So you know what I do with it? save it i save it you got to save your money you got to live below your means like you can't be sitting here like i know you I, i'm healthy and you can't be sitting here going to whole foods thinking you're going to live below your means i'm i'm <laughs> i'm i'm here to tell you it ain't going to happen you know what i'm saying so you you need to start thinking about um going to like aldi uh, aldi is my, <laughs> aldi's my place like all oh, it's cheap like i uh, oh man, I think I only spend like maybe fifty to seventy-five dollars a month at Aldi, and I still eat good. Look at me, I'm big, so I'm eating good. Don't worry about it. You can go to Aldi. It, it all like only thing you're paying for is the brand, and that is such a uh, and they jump, they hike up the price because it's uh it's a household name, but like these off brands be tasting just the same or even better. So you got to think about that. So uh, so you need to save your money and live below your means. Okay. And when you're saving your money, choose a savings account that you're actually going to get interest from. So for me, I uh, so for uh, for me, I bank through Ally. And so the two top um, savings accounts Besides, like, if you can get into a credit union, get into a credit union because they got amazing interest rates uh, when it comes to savings accounts. But uh, if you're not into credit unions, um, choose Ally Bank accounts or online bank, and it has like a one point. I want to say one point five percent. I have to check that. You can go check it. Um, but um, uh, uh, APR and it's great you you get you you're sitting there you just let your you just let your money sit in there it's an online bank it doesn't have any storefronts it's an online bank that's why they can allow you to have so many uh uh such a high interest rate and you just sit there and let your cash accumulate that's all you're doing you're letting your cash accumulate so that is the best one unless you have unless you have military ties and you can do navy federal which they have the best interest rate so save your money be able to be in a better financial place when it comes to uh well when it comes to just your personal life you don't want to be sitting there like that I, I know how it feels to be sitting there in your apartment dead broke thinking man i guess i'm gonna go hungry tonight don't let it happen to you so right about now i'm at like almost 10 minutes so uh, this is going to be, I guess, a couple part uh, series. So um, next time um, we're going to talk uh, about how you, after you save your money, 
what do you do with it? And it's most likely going to be uh, some sort of investments. I'm talking about. I'll talk about the best investments that you can do as a PhD student getting a stipend. All right. So I think want to thank y'all for listening. Um, if you guys have any comments about what I said or any um, suggestions, any more suggestions on how other grad students can uh, be better with their financials or just got a question. Because, I mean, I think I'm pretty good with my financials. Uh, at least <laughs> my mom thinks so. She, she thinks I'm too cheap. But, you know, so let me know in the comments below. All right. Peace. No, you don't, bro. So, guys, it's late. It's real late. But, um... What, what, what should we tell the people? Don't forget to comment, mm -hmm. like, right. share, mm. and subscribe. Mm, let them know. Do that. Ain't that right, Aaron? That's right. Light skins, bro. You just can't. But this dark skin, this melanin right now. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo. Like, share, subscribe. Visit the website, Scientists Who Live. Hey. Gang, gang.